functional testing framework uh, to do browser automation. We'll also see who uh, made this. Uh, kudos for those. Uh, how JEP works, especially in a Grails related context. I'll try to compare both Grails 2 and Grails 3 in this, uh, this regard. Uh, show you how to, uh, how to do browser support and also how to do JavaScript with, uh, with this. My name is Jacob. I'm a senior engineer at uh, Lego. I, previously, I was four years, uh, four years with Gemting DT, doing uh, only uh, Groovy and Grails related stuff. Uh, I'm also an external associate professor at the University of Southern Denmark, and I block the Grail Thyre each week, or almost each, every week. So, when we consider functional testing, this is where we ignore the underlying uh, implementation and just assume that whenever we supply some input, we get some output or some reaction. So we don't know much about the, uh, the uh, application that we are actually testing. Uh, so in web applications, this is typically where we uh, use a browser and automate exactly what a normal user would do in the, in the browser. And traditionally, this has been cumbersome, brittle, and almost impossible to do. But Jeb, as a framework, I think eases the pain a uh, great, uh, great deal. So credit should go to Luke Daly, who invented Jeb many years ago. Uh, when Luke turned to uh, be project lead of Rat Pack, he turned over the, uh, the uh, realm to Martin Edmund, who is now uh, leading the project. Started back in 2009. Um, so, why do we want to use, uh, use Jeb? Well, Jeb runs on top of WebDriver, but it's a lot easier API. Uh, we have some jQuery-like uh, syntax selectors that makes it easy to, uh, to uh, extract the different uh, DOM nodes in, uh, in the browser. We also have the expressiveness of the Groovy language, and it's pretty easy modeled with, uh, with pages and with, uh, with modules for readability and uh, reusability. It integrates extremely well with, uh, with Gradle. And for an open source project, this is just about the best documentation I've seen. Um, so WebDriver is uh, the successor for the Selenium framework. If anyone tried to do work with Selenium, they'll be really pleased to work with Jeb. Uh, then I haven't said too much. Uh, you can use either JUnit test or you can use Spock. I will only use Spock in my presentation but there are GitHub uh, repos available where you can see how to, how to integrate with, uh, with JetPub. So, how do we use it? Well, very important thing when using Jeb is how do we select stuff in the browser? And as I mentioned, this is more or less, in, uh, this is very inspired by JavaScript and the jQuery syntax, so we just use the dollar sign with a P to select all, uh, all P elements. We can, uh, we can match just the first P element giving it an extra parameter, and we can also match by titles or classes and stuff like that. Um, we can navigate because every time we have a selector, it returns a navigator object. So we can call parents, next, children, methods like that that you can find in the, uh, in the documentation. Uh, we can also retrieve information. So these are kind of, uh, kind of very, uh, very simple uh, very simple tags uh, uh, retrieving. So when you have select any P tag, well, the tag is, of course, P. But if you select anything by ID, it might be an idea to check, is this actually the tag that I expected it to be? Uh, we can select classes and titles and stuff like that. We can also interact with content. This is, of course, needed if we have to act like a browser. So the dot .click method is simply clicking a button, a link, or anything that we can select in our DOM. Uh, is displayed is very handy for checking, do we actually have this visible on our screen? Uh, so it could be something that was, uh, that was hidden. When it comes to JavaScript, lots of, uh, lots of frameworks have a hard time handling it. JEP, I think, does a very, very nice job because it just has closures you can use so if there's a confirm box that, uh, that you want to confirm, or if it's just an alert, you need to click and get it away, you can use the with confirm or with alert uh, uh, closures. It's nice to send input, so we need that. And I think the, uh, the syntax for doing this with just the, uh, just the left ship operator in Groovy makes this for really readable tests. 
We can also use the underlying web driver implementation and do control, uh, control clicking and, uh, and all of this stuff. So it's always possible to go down to, uh, to uh, leverage everything from, uh, directly from the web driver, but just about all of it, Jeb actually has, uh, has exposed through its API. Interacting with forms, I think, is very elegant. Uh, so if we consider the form that, uh, that's just an input with type text, name Jeb, and a value, we can, if we select the form element, just go directly for the name, and we can, uh, we can extract the value or we can set the value. This are, these are literally just shortcut for the more messier stuff uh, in, the, in the bottom of this slide. Uh, more things we have available is when you're at a browser page, you can, as a variable, extract its title. You can uh, go with the underlying browser element, uh, you can extract the current URL, and you can mess with the current window if you need to enlarge it or, uh, or shrink it. You can upload files. This is a bit, uh, this is a bit tricky, and I'll show you, uh, show you one way to, uh, to do that, uh, both for uploading and downloading later in my talk. Uh, you have uh, closure, where, closures where you can interact, so you can si uh, simulate drag and drop. So this is just a closure where you'll say push the button on this, move it to here, and release. And this will be done in one, uh, one movement. We can do control clicking like it, uh, I had in the previous slide, and we can do interaction with, uh, with JavaScript, actually just, uh, just like we do in the, in the console. So it's quite powerful. So how do we structure JEP test? Well, I decided that first we should see how, how people start out writing JEP scripts. And we just do that, and then we try to mix it up with a more, uh, more natural and uh, structured way to do it. So let's test a CRUD part of an application, just registering uh, conference attendees that I was using in the workshop the other day. So we want to test that we are able to go to the list of attendees, that we can create a new employee, including uh, just submitting without any valid data. We can update the employee and we can check the data is updated. So, how do we get around that? Well, any Spark test, uh, sorry, any JEP test uh, will extend a JEP spec. This is how the framework knows what it is. So, we'll do a, a 10D functional spec with all our specifications in there. So, how many here knows the syntax for Spark? Okay, how many have never heard about Spark? Excellent. You've been on Great Conf uh, the exact right amount of time. So, this is, what I'm going to present here is the naive, unmaintainable way. So don't ever do this at home. This is just for demo, and we will rework this. So what we'll say is, well, we shall go to the attendee index page, and then check that the title is uh, attendee list. Uh, I think I have the application spun up uh, so we can see what we're actually uh, actually testing. Uh, there we go. So we're going to test this attendee uh, class. So we can create a new attendee. We can click some stuff here. We're being informed that we need to fill out this stuff. This should have an valid email. And I think that should do it. We want to edit this and rename people. Something like that. This process that I just showed you is exactly what we want to test. But we don't want to do it every time we made a change for the code. We want that done with continuous integration, or at least, uh, at least in an automatic way. So here I select the, uh, the uh, A tag that is uh, styled for the Create button, and I click it. Uh, and then that should be where the title is called Create Attendee. Uh, then I want to submit the form without having anything filled out, and I'm still at the Create Attendee page. I don't get anywhere else. Uh, I submit the form, so now I input some data right into the form. I select a button, I click on that, and then, I, then I'm at the Show Attendee page, and I extract some content, see that it's actually, actually there. Uh, Looks all of this kind of messy. We have all the CSS selectors littered all over. So we click and we edit, and again, we, we try to extract this, uh, this, uh, this information. 
So once we made a few scenarios, clicking around in the JEP specs, this gets extremely messy, and it's totally unmaintainable. We have way too much duplication. All of these selectors, they're littered everywhere. If we change our DOM, we'll have to change all our tests. And we definitely don't want to do that, because we have a lot of tests. We're, we're pragmatic programmers. Um, so the way JEP handles this is by making pages and modules, and we extract the element of the pages into the page, uh, page and module so we can reuse them. This means if we change the DOM, we can just change a page or a module, and all our tests will pass again. So page object describes a web page. It has a URL. Uh, it has the content that we wish to interact with, and it also has an, uh, a method, so we can check that we are actually at the place uh, that we want to be, so an at checking. So our attendee show page will look something like this. It has a static URL, the at checking, which in this case just check that the title is similar to show attendee. And then it has a content. So those of you that just saw, uh, just saw uh, uh, Jeff, uh, on how to do all of these, uh, these transformation in Grails, this is the exact same framework. So this is a content uh, closure that does, uh, that does methods for all of these, checking that things are available. So some of this is kind of messy, the name and the email, but given the, the CRUD that Grails generate on a, on, a, uh, on a domain object, we don't have specific IDs or classes that we can, uh, we can reuse for the exact values. So we need to do something like this. But in case we change something, we can change it only here, and all our tests will have, uh, have that available. The module are used for repeated content. This can be across pages. This will typically be the navigation bars, sidebar stuff that, uh, that are shared. Or it can be within the same page. So when I have a list, then those table rows will be repeated, and we can reuse that with, uh, with modules. So here I have an example of the navigation bar module where we have a home button, we have a list attendee, and we have a new attendee. All of these are required false because depending on where we are in this CRUD application, only two out of three buttons are typically shown. So we, we, want, we don't want to say that also all of these are required. If we do that, JEP will fail because if you, if you specify that they're required, they must be available on that page. Um, for modules, you can, either, you can either do this in uh, two ways, or you can do this in two ways. You can just define a module, a navigation bar module, that requires it to have a base set within the module, or you can, you can supply a selector that selects where it should go from, and then you don't have to uh, have, to have the, uh, the uh, base set uh, inside the module. Um, this is what one of the modules could look like. This is the, uh, the, the uh, table row from an attendee. So in the data variable, we just select all the TD elements, and then we iterate over those as a method. So the name, email, nationality, uh, date created, and last updated are basically just, uh, just those, uh, those elements. So if we go to the attendee list page, these are the different, uh, different TDs that, uh, that we're working on. <clears throat> when it's repeated content within the page, I can make a module list with a specific module. And in this, uh, this situation here, I've selected all the table rows and called tail. Tail is well known from the uh, uh, functional programming where we just exclude the very first element. We're not interested in, in the first table row that has all the uh, column headers. We're just interested in the exact, uh, in the exact data in this, uh, in this scenario. Uh, this means that we now can use uh, the attendees as a, as, a, as a list, so we can extract all the names and say, is there any of these that contains Jelome Laforge? If there is, we're, we're happy. Uh, so this makes for very readable tests. Um, so, let's try to restructure our very ugly test from before, now using our, uh, our pages uh, that uses modules. This means that if we want to go to the list page and check where we're actually there, this is all it takes. So, even if you did not know JEP before, I'm guessing 
you can understand what happens here. It makes for a very readable test. In the next part, in the menu bar, the new attendee button, we want to click it. Then we should be at the attendee create page. Then we will submit the form without no errors, and that's just by clicking the button, and we're still on the, uh, at the attendee create page. We should probably have some check that there's an error message popping up, but this was just for, uh, for display. Now we have the form, and the, under the form we want to add the name and the email, and we submit. Then we add the attendee show page, and the name and email are now defined in the page, so that we can just reference them directly. Again, all of this nasty stuff with selectors stored in the page, it's only there once, uh, one place, so if I move around in the, in, the, in the DOM, I have to update my page, but my JEP specifications, they'll, all, uh, they'll still be working. So if I click the edit button, I'll end up at the uh, edit page, and if I, uh, if I now input new material, uh, new information, I can, get, I can see that I'm on, a, on the attendee show page, we'll have exactly the, uh, the same, uh, same information. So, we're all doing Grails, or at least that was the title of the presentation. So let's see how we, do, how we interact with Grails. And we'll start out with Grails 2. So in the Grails 2 series, you need to install both some dependencies and in the, the JEP plugin uh, in itself. So right now, the example here is using the Firefox driver. The Selenium support on top of that is required if you want to set values in select drop-downs and a bit of extra stuff. So I recommend always include it. Uh, it gives some nasty errors if, uh, if you have uh, left it out and you're trying to do, uh, to do stuff with, for example, uh, uh, drop-down and select boxes. Uh, to run the test, uh, Grails test app functional colon. This is the syntax for, uh, for Grails 2, so we're basically just running all the functional type tests here. Um, in Grails 3, uh, sorry, I, I, haven't, I skipped one thing here. So the test will be placed in test slash functional. So there is a specific, uh, specific folder for that when you need to generate these, uh, these tests by hand. Uh, in Grails 3, Jeb is default as a plugin when you have the web profile. Um, so this is, exact, this is exactly copy-pasted from, uh, from the build.gradle file. It has the JEP plugin, and it comes installed with the uh, Selenium HTML unit driver. This is a headless driver, and as the uh, recommendation even says in the comment, well, you, we should upgrade this to a more robust driver. Since we're automating stuff in a browser, having a headless, semi-robust driver is not the best, uh, the best option. Um, in Grails 3, we can now say create functional test and whatever scenario or we are gonna, we're going to test. This places a test in source integration test Groovy. So now our functional test using Jeb is more considered as a hybrid of, uh, of integration test. This also means when we'll be running the test, it is test app dash integration. So this is one of the places where the, uh, I really like Grail 3, but the documentation is, uh, is uh, limping a little bit behind. So at some point in time, uh, someone will have to update it, and uh, I have a pull request coming up, I'm, I'm expecting that. Um, so the generated class in Grail 3 looks like this. This is uh, from Grails, create functional test, many attendees spec. And there's one nasty thing here, and that is, this, is act this works with the HTML unit driver. But as soon as you change it to a Firefox driver or a Chrome driver, this fails miserably. This is because I just told you that the title is as a variable, and you cannot, with those drivers, select it as a selector. So in this case here, the first thing we want to do just to test it with a new driver should be remove uh, uh, the very last line, the title.text, should just be title equals welcome to Grails. Then it works. So how can we interact with the, uh, with the application uh, that we're testing? Sometimes not everything is exposed through the web API. We may need to generate some test data or, or mess up some state in order to, uh, to test stuff. 
uh, in Grails 2.5, this is done through the remote plugin. In 2.5, it is really functional testing. The, the tests and the application runs in separate JVMs, so there's really tight, uh, tight limits there. Uh, the remote control plugin is just a plugin you need to install, and then you have the remote closure available. So you send a closure to your application, have that, have that executed there, and it can be returned. It has some limitations. It needs to be serializable, both what you, uh, what the closure and especially what you send back. But it is possible to interact with, uh, with the application in, uh, in this way. In Grail 3, everything runs in the same JVM, so interaction is, po uh, is uh, possible directly. So, and also the tests run more like, uh, like integration tests. So what we can do is, if we want to have 15 new attendees in our test, we can do attendee with new transaction and do all our stuff. This also requires us to clean up this manually because it will be left for, uh, for good otherwise. But this, actually, uh, this will actually uh, have the, uh, the effect of creating the attendees and they're available for our test data. Um, if this is a good thing, I won't be, uh, be a judge of. But it's, it's a possible thing to do now in Grails 3. Um, this I included uh, primarily because of the other uh, tweet, but also to, uh, to, uh, to conclude that the, the pagination, so it's default there if, uh, if we have more than, uh, than 10 or 20, uh, 20 uh, elements, uh, but it's not there otherwise. So it should be included with require false. Uh, but on our page object, we can supply methods. And I've supplied a has pagination method, which uses the groovy truth. So it basically just tests on this one, do we have some text? And if we have text, yes, all right, then it's there. If not, then, uh, then it's not there. So the, uh, the selector there will always return a, an object. Uh, in an empty, uh, an empty object, an empty navigator object, I think it is. <coughs> so how do we configure uh, our JEP test for supporting different, uh, different browsers? In, uh, in both Grails 2 and Grails 3, you must place a file called jepconfig.groovy. In uh, Grails 3, I'm recommending placing it in source integration test groovy. Uh, and if you're not, if you're not thinking about uh, studying the manual for anything else, please read the part in the manual about configuring, uh, configuring Jeff. There are very many options for doing it, uh, but there's also some that are, that are less intuitive, but it is very powerful. Uh, so you need to include those drivers that you, want to, uh, that you want to test with. So I typically include the Chrome driver and the Firefox driver. They run, uh, they run uh, uh, fairly smooth. If you test with the Firefox driver and it only shows up with a, a white screen, that's simply because you haven't updated to the latest, uh, latest Selenium driver. Uh, so the current one right now is 2.45.0, and occasionally it goes out of date, but it takes very, uh, very few days until it's, uh, until it's upgraded. So in jetconfig, we can configure these different browsers. Uh, and some tests are easy to make in some browsers, and some are, some are almost impossible to make in others. Uh, so one thing I had to do was, when downloading a file, the file dialog on where to store it is a native browser thing, and that's apparently almost impossible to, uh, to create, uh, create something, uh, something for it. WebDriver doesn't support it. This means that Jeb has basically no, uh, no chance of doing it. Uh, so to do that, one th uh, the best workaround I've come up with is in Firefox, you can, s you can say you don't have to ask where, uh, if this should be stored or it should, if it should be opened. Please just store it in this location every time I click a button. Uh, and in that, you can make a Firefox profile and you can set browser download folder list to be the size of two and, uh, and never ask, just save it to, uh, save it to disk. Um, if, you're, if you're storing anything but, uh, but the comma-separated files, you need another line here. So if you're storing Word documents, 
you need to set profile dot, uh, uh, set preferences on that type of uh, that type of uh, document too. Then the uh, second uh, second lowest line here says, "I want to run this in a maximized window of Firefox. Otherwise, it uh, it comes up with a with a shorter, smaller window." Um, you can also set specific uh, specific height and width uh, with for it. The Chrome driver, uh, the Firefox driver, that works as soon as you have Firefox installed on your computer. So it's it's the easiest brow browser to start up with uh, using Jap. I recommend that one for uh, for just about every uh, any task. When it comes to Chrome, it is a bit faster, but it do require to have Chrome driver downloaded. Uh, this doesn't mean that it, that it's it's too hard. So you can make a script something like this that that depending on your operating system will will find the exact location of the uh, of the driver. Uh, in this case, assuming you're using 32-bit uh, windows. Could be upgraded to, to 64 now. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, then we get make a method that downloads the driver, unpacks it to a specific uh, specific file directory of our choice. And the the choice in, in my in, in my example here could be built drivers, Chrome, Chrome driver. When uh, when we're using Grail 3, we have a, a built folder generated by Gradle. And that replaces kind of the target folder in Grail. So I think this is a natural where, natural location. If it was uh, if it was Grails two, I would place it in the target folder, so it will be be deleted every time we do a Grails clean. Um, so the funny uh, the thing uh, in this configuration is I fixed the the dimension to be thousand uh, thousand pixels wide and twenty five pixels uh, pixels high. And I place it in the uh, in the upper left corner of uh, of my screen. Um, you can configure how t uh, how Jeb should be uh, should be waiting uh, or if it should be waiting. The default timeout is five seconds. So if you include a waiting uh, waiting closure with timeout, you can set that to in this case ten second uh, ten seconds, and also define the retry interval. So if you set a very high retry interval. Well, your computer won't have as much to do, but your test will run slow. If you set it very low, well, it'll burn, uh, burn hot. The base navigator waiting is one of these that is almost always worth to have. That is, if your application for some reason runs a little bit slow, you'd want this so that Jeb doesn't say, well, I didn't end up at the right page, just because you would ended up at the right page a second, uh, second later. Uh, and you want at check waiting to be true. So, how do we use this waiting? No. Nope. Uh, the retry interval is how often does it actually try while it waits? So it's a sleep period. Yeah. Uh, so, how do we use waiting? Uh, I made this very, uh, very annoying simple example that just three seconds after the page has been loaded. This uh, this hi are you waiting for me uh, div is being uh, is being uh, slided down. Uh, so let's see. I think I can uh, can do this as the. Oh. This is not mirrored screen. To be warned. There we go. So it's just another list page, and it slides down there. So as soon as we load the page, the content is not there. So if we just let Jeb test for this, uh, hi, are you waiting for me? It will fail because the content is not there. That that is uh, is, is one typical example when you're doing stuff with uh, with Ajax or JavaScript in general, uh, asynchronous, uh, asynchronous stuff. Then the uh, then the uh, then the waiting is uh, is come uh, is to come in very handy. So you can use the wait for and then the fade in message uh, dot text, and it will uh, it will then actually uh, actually just wait for the specific uh, period that we've uh, we've defined it to. So reporting. Generally, the uh, JEP uh, the, the the JEP test reports just like any other uh, any other uh, Grails test. So it's nicely formatted with the Spark Power Asserts format. But the output sometimes is not as easy to read. 
because this is a kind of visual test. Sometimes you may not end up at the uh, at the right place, uh, or you ended up at a location that you uh, that you didn't anticipate. So, what you can do is extend JEP reporting spec instead. If you extend JEP uh, JEP reporting spec, JEP will make sure to take a screenshot and also save the HTML from the time each test has, uh, has finished in a reports directory that you must set in the JEP config. If you haven't set it, the test will fail. Uh, this comes in, in fairly handy, but sometimes you can have multiple steps in, uh, in your JEP test. So especially for debugging, the report command or method is really handy. So if you use this, it will take a screenshot and insert it into the uh, numeric list of screenshot. So all the tests are saved in a, a per folder, uh, per folder, uh, uh, sorry, per test folder, and they are, num uh, they are uh, numbered. And this one will just be uh, be entered in the sequence of uh, of numbers. So it's 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 rather easy to uh, to locate. Uh, you can also search for the uh, for the name that you specify uh, specify there. Sometimes we can't get, a, get away with it. We need to use JavaScript to do weird stuff. This could be scrolling the page or just make this visible because a hacker would be able to do it, so I want, I want, to be, uh, I want that to be, uh, to be included. Um, and it's, it's rather, rather easy to, uh, to execute JavaScript. So if we, if we study this, uh, this small piece of, uh, of code, if we want to, uh, want to mess with the link here, uh, and we try to do just a selector and click on it, well, then we have an uh, uh, we'll end up with an element not visible uh, exception. So our test will fail. And that's, of course, if you, are, if you are a user, you can't see this button, so you won't uh, be able to click on it. Uh, a user would then be able to, to, to mess with the DOM or use the, uh, the uh, developer console and say, well, show this or remove the display none uh, thing here. So this is what we can do. We can take the JavaScript executor from the driver and execute a script. So in this case, the jQuery.well, we can just show it. Uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think this doesn't read very well. So I recommend that you wrap some, uh, some uh, JS function. If, if, if you intend to use this a lot, well, Probably you have a base class that you, uh, that you uh, extend all your JEP classes from and make this uh, JS, uh, JS uh, method available from it. From then, you just serve a script to this and it executes it on the page that you're at. In this, uh, in this way, I think the, uh, the lower part of this uh, the slide reads a lot better. You simply say, do this with, uh, with JS. So. What other usage could we have from, uh, from JEP besides functional testing? Well, you could use this for automatically uh, screen scrape a, uh, a site, or if you're uh, Cedric Champeau and you really wanted to solve the, uh, the uh, 2048 puzzle, you can make a solver using, uh, using JEP. He has done it, and I've, uh, I've linked to it here in the, in the resources. Uh, the jebis.org manual is really, really good. It's called the Book of Jeb, and it has a huge amount of, uh, of valuable, uh, valuable information. You can find, uh, find Jeb on uh, GitHub. Uh, the uh, 2048 solver is, uh, is with, uh, with in Malix's, uh, Cedric's uh, GitHub repo. Uh, Thomas Lin has written a nice, rather old article, but, but still very handy for knowing what happens under the hood uh, in, uh, in Jeb. And I have a, a, a Grails demo from where all of these come from that is made with Grails 3.0. I haven't f located any other resource using JEP with, uh, with Grails 3, and the documentation in grails.org is a little bit out of date. Uh, so I think it's time for, uh, for, the, uh, for the demo now. So I will try to do this. And Hopefully, I've sacrificed enough for the demo code. So I'm going to stop the, uh, the application from running and basically try to run all the tests that, uh, that I've showed you in, uh, in this talk. 
So, test tab dash integration, and this should be all. And hopefully the uh, the browser will turn out on the right screen. Otherwise, I'll have to move it. Yeah, Jeb is not unit testing, so it does take a little longer to uh, to execute. Oh. Damn it, you get the screen right here. Once it's working, it, uh, in my opinion, works a little bit faster than, uh, than your average uh, Q&A person manually clicking around. So, just, just a little, uh, little, uh, little shorter. So, wow, that took me uh, not as long as expected to get through 75, uh, 75 slides. So, are there any questions? Or should I be live demoing some, uh, some more jab? I have hidden a lot of code, so we could take a look at that if you want. Oh, the report, yeah, of course. So, first, there is the HTML without any CSS. Uh, so this is one of the uh, one of the very first tests, and you can see the the screenshot of uh, of the test there. And I have uh, an entire folder just from uh, from one of these uh, one of these tests. Uh, the test report. I'm gonna get, grab it back there. So build reports. There we go. This looks just like a plain Grail 3 uh, test report. We can, uh, we can dive into the, uh, to the different packages. So we have the attendee ugly functional spec. That was, the, that was the one you should never do in that way. It works, but as soon as we change, uh, change something in the, uh, in the DOM, we'll have to update it, uh, update it multiple places. You can get, uh, get the output. So this is the output from downloading the, uh, the Chrome driver. I should probably make a demo where I'm changing this to the uh, to the Firefox driver to see that it actually works in uh, in uh, full screen mode. Yeah, I'm going to change over to that now. There's one thing I've encountered with Grails Grail 3 using Grail that, and it doesn't do it now. Thank you. Uh, sometimes when you haven't changed anything in your test and you want to run your, uh, run your test again, it says, well, you haven't changed anything, so I, I just pass immediately. Uh, it might be an IntelliJ issue, but sometimes I do, did actually change stuff. Oh, and it showed up, and it maximized. And the tests are running, uh, running fairly smoothly, but not as fast as in, uh, as in Chrome. There we go, we were waiting for that one. Oh, there we were waiting for it. Okay, so it worked also in, uh, also in Firefox. Uh, yes? Then there is a, an Internet Explorer plugin. Uh, I cannot run it on my Linux computer. Uh, so there are some support. I haven't tried this myself, but there are support for doing remote, uh, remote testing, also with the, uh, with the Internet Explorer. It's described in the, uh, in the book of Jeb, but I haven't, uh, I haven't tried it. If you run it on a Windows computer, there's a, a plugin just like, uh, just like the Firefox and the Chrome, so you can uh, spin that up with the, uh, with the Internet Explorer. It's a Selenium support plugin. Yeah, I think we received the question from YouTube. Okay, so the question was, uh, what if you promised your, uh, your customi customers that it, this will work in Internet Explorer? And let me just find the place in the code. So this is in... 
Oh, get me to the right place. So I'm going to share my editor here. So right here, where I say I want to have the Selenium Chrome driver and the Selenium Firefox driver, there's also a Selenium Internet Explorer driver, and you just make an instance of that. So if you're working on Windows, that's all it takes to, uh, to get Internet Explorer up and working. If you're working on a Linux computer like me, you need to do this uh, remote. There are some support for, uh, for Jeb using source labs, which has all of the browsers as, uh, as testers uh, to test in. I haven't done it, and recently I heard it was uh, not too easy to set up. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's where my limitations go. The Selenium grid server, I'm unfamiliar with that, so... Yeah. I'm fairly, fairly sure that it, that it does support that. But again, I haven't, uh, I haven't tried it. <coughs> yeah, I think you need to configure that in JEP config, uh, just like with the, uh, with the remote server. But it's, it's to the best of, of my, my knowledge. I think, uh, I think Marcin or Luke would be, uh, would be or the JEP mailing list. The JEP mailing list is fairly active, and, uh, and especially Marcin replies almost instantly. I don't know where he gets the time. What about the, the difference of the HTML unit driver? What was the... Uh, what, what is that used for? Oh, the HTML unit driver? Yeah. That's a default headless, uh, headless browser, so you can use. So when you, when you just run Jeb for the very first time in Grail 3. This is the default that they've selected. Uh, and you can run your test there. Uh, it's, since this is just a, a headless, not really a browser driver, it's not the most robust, uh, robust driver. So you're actually not testing your code in a real browser. So that, that's why, why the, the framework recommends to upgrade to a Firefox browser or a, or a Chrome browser, or an Internet Explorer browser, uh, you know, like that. Yes, you can test any application with uh, with Jeb. There's a Gradle plugin for for testing these. So so since you're just working through the browser, you can test anything a a standard user would be able to do in a browser. So, so Angular, Angular application or, or application in any framework would be supported. In Grails, it's really easy to write these tests because we can, we can plug them in. We have, we have support for running those with integration. But, but it doesn't have to be a Grails project to use JEP. Yes. So, so when, when, you're, when you're using one of these selectors, it, it just looks at the DOM from the browser and extracts exactly that element, and it generates a, a JEP-specific navigator element. So in case you're using an Angular, uh, Angular for your framework, you're, st you're still selecting some DOM now from your Angular, and, you, and given this very dynamic nature of, uh, of Angular, you might need to litter your code with wait for before it's there, but, but it is possible to test. So it's, it's, Jeb is for browser automation. It's just very well integrated with Rails. Okay. Yeah, there are, there are excellent support for, for Phantom JS in the, in the framework too. It just doesn't suit very well for demos here. Um, yeah. Is there a handle for retrieving the underlying web browser on the server? Yes, there is. So, uh, I mean, we have a lot of things based on Selenium, which is a web browser. So, uh, migrating to Jet, you could do that in Firefox. Is that, is that right? 
I haven't tried it, but my initial guess is, would you be able to migrate from old Selenium test to Jeb in a stepwise manner? Is, I can't see there should be a problem with it. You do have access to the underlying web driver uh, uh, implementation through Jeb. So that should be, that should be doable. One, uh, one, uh, one thing uh, on the comments on speed over here is if, if, you're, not, if you're not using these, uh, these images from uh, the JEP reporting spec, well, it does take a significant slowdown to generate those. And they're in, uh, in the JEP config configuration is a parameter where you can say you would only want to have the image, uh, image generated if the test fails. So all your successful tests will just, uh, just ignore it. So that, that's recommended for, for speed. Is it possible to get the image for each uh, when phase? Uh, not, un un not unless you do that manually, to, the, to my knowledge. So you need to insert a report uh, at each of, these, uh, each of these steps. Otherwise, it's only at the, uh, at the end of the test. But I would also say that, that you shouldn't have much code in your when block. Before, uh, before you should break it up into, uh, into two-step uh, test. One thing I haven't mentioned is I almost always have stepwise on my JEP test. So let's go with one of these. So here, I almost always add the stepwise. This means that each step in the test is being executed in a sequential manner, which more mimics the way that a user you, uh, will work in a browser. So first, I click the login button, then I insert, uh, insert whatever in the, in the pop-up, I click a new button, make sure always to test where you are. Okay, any other questions? No, and I don't think I would recommend using JEP for, for performance testing. I guess you could, but JEP is not known for, well, the prime feature of JEP is not speed. So when you, get, when you have large test suites of JEP tests, well, it do take some time to, uh, to go through them. Uh, in, in Chrome, it goes fairly okay with the headless. It's, it's rather fast, but the Internet Explorer driver is, depending on the version, not at all the fastest. So I'd, I would say the purpose of Jeb, would, in my opinion, is not doing performance tests. I would, I would select a performance testing framework, possibly Gatling or something like that for it. Okay, there was another question. What was that the same? If you don't have it, oh, come help me here. Uh, anyone knows? I think I think you place a, uh, or as far as I remember it, you place a transaction around each of these uh, each, these steps, and you're not you're not guaranteed that they'll be uh, be executed in in the sequential manner. That's a new uh, Grail 3 uh, annotation for the integration test. So that's a, that's a, a Grail thing. Pardon me? It's supposed to do database rollback. So yeah. It, it works primarily as, a, as an integration, uh, integration test, but I haven't done much, uh, much research into it if it actually does the rollback on the JEP, JEP test. Usually on functional tests, you don't do rollbacks because you, don't, you have an access to the, uh, to the application. But I'm guessing they could be done now. We'll have to ask, uh, ask uh, Jeff or, or Graham on that. The step was, that works as JUnit. In JUnit, uh, it takes uh, the order of the tests uh, by uh, name or something like that. Uh, so the step was the so stepwise takes those sequentially, and if one test fails, 
it doesn't try to execute the following ones. So it kind of indicates that all of these tests belong together. So if something goes wrong, well, you don't have to you don't have to continue because you're most likely in a whole different place in your application. So it doesn't really make sense. So you don't want to have four failed tests when it's only the the, the first failed.